Hello and welcome to my channel Bevy with Beth. I'm Beth and here on this channel I talk all about polycystic ovarian syndrome, the symptoms, how to cope with them and how my personal journey with PCOS is going. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below to catch my videos every single week and today we're going to be talking about cortisol. Now it's true I did do a cortisol video previously but it has been about a year now and I feel that video wasn't very concise and since I have done a hormone series with the reproductive hormones I also wanted to do a new video about cortisol and about insulin that would be far more concise for you and kind of fitting in with the format of the previous hormones that I've talked about and include it in my hormone series. So it's going to be cortisol today. So first of all we need to know what cortisol is. Cortisol is the stress hormone. Basically, it's an essential part of our hormone system to keep us prepared for danger, to get us up and going in the mornings, and it helps with our flight or fight response and helps our body to prepare for one or the other. What cortisol does is it helps our brain to function better. It raises our blood glucose levels so that we have easy access to energy. And it also shuts down the functions that if you needed to run for a long period of time or expend a lot of strength in fighting, we wouldn't be wasting energy running, running systems that we don't actually need. So things like our reproductive system, hair growth and cell repair all slow down or in some cases completely shut down in order for all of our energy and focus all of our brain power and all of our energy at expenditure to be spent solely on running away very, very fast from whatever it is that's threatening us. And whilst cortisol is really an essential hormone and definitely not something you want to get rid of, in our modern society, unfortunately, we're under the wrong kind of stresses where our cortisol is still doing its natural response, but we're not getting the opposite response. We're not getting the rest and repair. We are not actually expending energy in physical effort of fighting or flighting and so it tends to get a little bit confusing. What tends to happen is it will create weight gain because our body thinks we're in danger and we need to store the energy that we're consuming. It will also lead to high blood pressure as we're trying to get blood around our bodies much much faster when again it just isn't necessary and it ultimately leads to fatigue which also means there will be mood swings and just a general unhappiness. And very often people who run on a very high cortisol level for a long period of time, when they do finally get to that rest, they're gonna have a major collapse. So there are quite a few things that we can do to help to maintain our cortisol levels, which will help to reduce inflammation. It'll also help to go towards balancing our blood sugar levels, especially if cortisol is one of the main reasons why we're struggling with our blood sugar levels. It will also massively benefit our mental health. And the top three things that I think would definitely be the best place to start to manage your cortisol would be getting enough sleep. Now, having too much cortisol can result in insomnia. So possibly you might struggle to get a good sleep at first, but definitely having that rest and repair time, really shutting and calming down before the end of the day, before going to bed and getting a decent amount of sleep really helps our body to recover from that amount of stress that we've been having during the day. And of course, doing things like meditation or light exercises like yoga and walking will really help to shift our body out of that frantic forward motion mindset and get us back into a rest, relaxation and recover mindset. Another great thing to do kind of at the end of the day before bed or like quite a bit before bed so we've got that kind of process of right I was working, I was stressed, now we've calmed down and then we'll be ready to get to sleep. But one of the best things that I have found that made a big difference in my cortisol levels was actually not just tackling it for the end of the day. Even though that is a really good idea and getting sleep is essential to be able to manage any of your hormones, I found personally that by noticing fight or flight response clicking on during the day, whether that was a stress at work or an argument with a person 
or doing something like being in traffic, being late for public transport, whatever it was that was causing me to get into that flight or fight mode, even in the smallest way, to notice that happening and at that moment take a deep breath or three normally, <laughs> especially at the beginning to get that to kind of kick in, to really stop that flight or fight response from sending cortisol coursing through our body and really calm it down at that point, which means then we're not getting into a perpetual cycle of constantly having cortisol in our bodies. Please check out my three meditation app recommendation. If you're interested in starting some breath work or some meditation, it is one of the best ways to help to manage your stress until you can get to a point where Whatever it is that's causing you stress can be changed because that's the ultimate goal, but not always the easiest thing to do. So check out that video to find out what I would recommend for starting meditation and breath work. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.